Siri, open messages. Siri, open photos. Oh, this is so cool. We'll put this over here and look up and oh, wow. Wow. Siri, take me to Yosemite. <laughs> Siri, close all my apps. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Holy sh- Oh, hey there, what's up everybody? Brian Tong here, and this is my review of, yes, the Apple Vision Pro. I've had it for about a week, been one of the few lucky people to really dive deep and get into this. And, you know, if there's one word that I could say to explain this, like one word, it's immersive. And we're gonna talk all about this because there is truly no other thing out there on planet Earth like this. This is one of a kind, and I'm sure, you know, everyone wants to try to make comparisons, but this is a whole new approach to the mixed reality space, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, and this review is gonna happen over multiple days because there's just so much to show you and experience, and the Apple Vision Pro, this is just different from the moment you look at it. The hardware, the elegance, the quality materials, like you can check out my unboxing for a real up-close look at it, and just even how to properly fit either this solo knit band or the dual loop band. I show it to you all, but for me in this review, I wanna bring as much of the experience to you as possible, right? I want you to see what makes it special, what makes this different, and obviously, look, I'm gonna say it right at the top, go check this out at an Apple store for yourself. For those of you that pre-ordered it on day one, hey, that's you, but that's not everybody. Most people are still considering, is this something that I really wanna invest in? $3,499 starting. So uh, that's that's what we're gonna hope to answer. Now, enough of that talk, right? Let's talk about setup. Setup starts with a eye measurement, then you do a hand scan, your palms, put your palms out, and then there's three different calibrations for tracking your pupil because of dilation. So it's done in different lighting. It's this fun little pattern of dots that you tap with your finger. This is kind of like the universal sign for Apple Vision Pro, right? Um, because look, this is what you're gonna use. You don't have to have, you don't need controllers, except you know if you wanna do some certain games, but it's your eyes and your hands, um, and these are your primary tools. So let's show you how to use them all together. Now, we already did the setup, all the calibration, and obviously eye tracking is a big part of this. So let's go to the home screen. I'm just gonna click the digital crown here, and I can. what you'll see is, Right now, what I'm staring at is what will be in focus for you, but I'm staring at the icons here, and that's just using my eye. You see them kind of come forward, all right? Because everything I do is with my eyes. If I want to select something, let's go to somewhere like messages. Let's just do a pinch or a single tap. It opens up the app. Look, everywhere where I look, you're seeing it get highlighted. The eye tracking is incredibly <laughs> accurate. And so when you first use this, you're, you'll be flying all over the place, but it's amazing. Okay, so we have the single tap. I can close this, or if I want to show you something else, let's do a pinch and hold. And on that bottom bar here, that allows me to manipulate this window however I want. Bring it close. Push it out far. I can even look on the on the right hand corner to expand the size of this. This is like scaling it, right? Bring it out smaller, depending on where it is. So there's a difference between positioning it closer to you or further away from you. And then also if you wanna do something like pinch and drag, look, I can scroll up and down here by pinching and dragging, holding it and going up and down. That's pretty neat. Let's go to somewhere like um, our photos, okay? I'm gonna select this. Here's our photos again, pinch and drag, hold it in spot, right, to move it up. Again, I can move this window around. Um, let's go into a specific photo here. And this is a fun one, and also similar to like multi-touch on your, on your phone, I have this photo here. Let's take two hands now, and I can skip, increase the size to zoom, right? Pinch to zoom, pinch to shrink it in within the space of the window here, all right? And then I can sing, single hold and move this around wherever I want. Oh, this is so, so freaking cool. And then I just tapped it to kind of get back to the regular size. But then let's also show you, 
So now I'm other gesture here. I'm gonna go to, let's do a pinch and drag to scroll through this, all right? One move. And there's an app called Jig Space. And it brings in 3D objects into environment. So I'm gonna go to this Alfa Romeo. And it's gonna load it in a moment. But I'm gonna show you some other cool things that you'll be able to do. All right, tap to place your jig. This is a 3D render model, but think of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate and manipulate this space as well. So I'm gonna take my two fingers, pinch together, and look now with this app and this specific gesture, I'm rotating the Alfa Romeo. I can also scale it and bring it up really big, right? I can push it in and tiny. This is all done real time. Um, I can even get close up and I think I can look at parts yeah, and pinch out, pinch off the tire here. All right. I can basically break this car down and pull it apart. Oh, this tire is really big here. Can you get out of my way? Okay. Thanks buddy. But this is again, some of the magic ways of using the gestures from tapping a single tap, pinching a hold, manipulating, rotating, zooming, hold up. I almost forgot. There's so much stuff here that sometimes I do forget things, so let's just go to my mail real quick. And I talked about a long press to drag, but for content, let's say you wanna share things, hold, and typically a contextual menu will pop up, and it gives me options like open link, add a reading list, copy link. I could share this, click on that, and then here I could share it to friends, airdrop, message, mail, however I want. There's just so many things that you can do here. App developers can make their own ones specific to their apps, so when I say multiple times here, we're just scratching the surface, we are scratching the surface, but so many really cool things that you can do here with Vision OS. And uh, yeah, we just getting started. It just feels so natural and you're gonna pick up using the OS right away. So I think the big thing about the eye tracking is we've seen it on something like the PSVR 2, but it was only used in maybe a few functions of games. But eye tracking here with um, Apple Vision Pro and the Vision OS is used the entire time to navigate it. Using hand gestures are being used the entire time. So it, you don't hold anything. It just really right away just feels second nature. I will say that, you know, because when you jump into this for the very first time, you're going to be juiced up. You're going to be amped up just because of the fidelity that you see. You've never seen anything like this in a consumer device. And I found myself just my eyes fluttering all over the place, looking everywhere. And so you almost have to like settle yourself down when you get inside here. But you know, in the very beginning of this video, I showed you multiple apps. Um, you can literally surround yourself. You can put different apps in different rooms of your house and then they'll stay in that place. Then when you walk over to that area, you'll be able to navigate with them. Uh, you can do a lot of that, but look, let's just get into the first experience. And that's, Starting off with spatial computing, you know, we're gonna do a little show and tell here because this is all about experiences. I'm so excited for you because look, this is the first time that we're gonna be able to see this in action. So I have Vision Pro on, obviously. Look over here, I have my M1 Max MacBook Pro. This is my workhorse and I'm using Adobe Premiere. So you see the option to connect to it. So I say, let's connect, right? I'm gonna select that. And it's literally just gonna take a few moments and Voila, we have a 4K display, Mac OS in front of me, now integrated into Vision OS. I can take, right, just like you'd expect, this app, and I can move around. I went to the screensaver, so let me get back here. All right, I can move this around wherever I want in space. I can bring it up here. Let's just put it right here in this nice sweet spot for me, right? My trackpad on my Mac is obviously what I'm gonna use to control Mac tab. This is my desktop, right, just in a large screen, so I can scroll through video here. I can play Let's do this. video here. The alternative light seal cushion. And again, I can go over here and look at my assets and just drop them in however I want. Just like I'm, I'm just like editing. This is real time. The latency, you don't feel it at all. So that's pretty cool. But should we bump things up a notch? Yes, of course we should. Siri, open messages. So the Vision OS app appears. I can move it around again however I want. Let's do another. Siri, open Safari. Oh, that's pretty cool. Maybe we'll have to revisit that later. But okay, I have these three apps around me, Mac OS and Vision OS, but here's where it gets saucy. I'm gonna take my mouse cursor and just pull it over. And what do you see here? 
See that little white cursor, what you're familiar with, with iPadOS, because that's the foundation of Vision OS apps? I can freely, I'm using the trackpad on my Mac to control this Vision OS app. I'm navigating through it. I'm using it. Like, this is freaking wild and amazing. I can play, you know, whatever, media content. I can scroll up and down. All right, let's go back here. Now you can see my trackpad on the Mac in Adobe Premiere. And let's go over here to Safari. Oh, there you go. Uh, should we play a little bit of this? What is, what's, what's your hair stripe gonna look like? I, it's, I mean, you, it kind of looks blended. You all, this is <laughs> Mac OS, Vision OS, two completely separate OSs working seamlessly in spatial computing. This is insane, and it works flawlessly right out of the gates. Uh, it is so impressive, right? This is, again, Apple's ecosystem coming together, and, oh, I could see myself doing things like, instead of bringing a workhorse like this, maybe something like an M2 MacBook Air, smaller in size, portable, more light, and then with Vision Pro on a plane while I'm traveling, pop this open to edit on a huge 4K screen. That's a higher resolution than the M2 MacBook Air. This is something that... I'm absolutely gonna do. The text rendering is so sharp and clean um, when you're looking inside the headset. This is just an amazing experience. And you can even see when I stare at things on here, right? It still is using Vision OS and my eye tracking if I want to, but you also have the capability to <laughs> use it either Vision OS or Mac OS like that. Uh, are you not wowed yet? I'm wowed and I've done this multiple times and there's a lot more to show you. Now, you have native apps that are built for Vision OS. You also have compatible apps that are either iOS or iPadOS that have been turned on. Um, you will find those in a folder on the home screen that's called compatible apps. But enough of me talking. Let's now show you another example of just some of the very, very first apps that are out there. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Club BTZ, coming to you from the moon. That's right. I'm in the moon environment, and you know what? You might have heard of the DJ app, but they're doing a whole lot of different things here in Vision OS. So let's launch this. Let's get going. Siri, open DJ. And you might be familiar with this, the two turntables. I've already loaded it with two different songs. You can select them from your music library, but I'm just going to play the first song on my left. Play this record, uh, The Gang. And then I'm going to play the right record over here. And you have the fader that I can slide in between, right? You know how to do this, right? This is fun, but you know, this is pretty standard. Mix around, play with tempo, but let's take this to the next level, all right? I'm gonna go in here to that icon here for basically like environments. Let's go to the wall and just give it a moment. It's asking me if I'm ready to get immersed. And here we go. Oh, the DJ table pops up. I'm gonna even take this DJ table, move it down to my actual table, all right? And again, you can play with different things. I can even scratch it. What? I can switch between here on the fader. Oh. But then you want to have some fun here. Look at this icon over here, right? That headphone. I'm going to click on it. This allows me to use a gesture now to preview the song on either side. So let's go here on the left side. I put my hand over my ear. You can't hear it, but I can hear the song on this record. That is insane. I can play here. I can scratch the records if I want. Oh, okay. Also, let's go in here to FX and a new kind of panel will show up here. What I'm gonna do here, well, hey, let's just play around. Oh, 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 ha ha. Oh. I mean, look at the club. Uh, everything is on me. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, you're seeing my view from inside, but this is just a day one app, Vision OS, just to give you a taste of what's possible. Not only mixing music, coming into these environments, and then the gesture to sample and preview the other song. Oh, uh, this is wild. You wanna see more cool apps? Of course you do. So I'm a huge NBA junkie. During my downtime, I have NBA League Pass. I'm watching games on my TV all the time, but there's an NBA app for Vision OS, so maybe we should check that out, all right? Siri, open NBA. So this is the app 
you know, you have uh, the games that you want to see during the day. But again, this is either games that are archived or games that are live. So, you know, there's no games happening right now. But obviously, that Lakers-Warriors game was insane. Two of the great ones, LeBron James and Steph Curry. So if this was, you know, the day of, I would hit, yeah, I'm going to watch now. And what you'd get is a stream of the game playing. Now, I'm going to pause this so we can talk about this, right? So let's say the game is playing, but I want to see what other games are happening. I also want to see what's happening in this game. So I can click on Team Stats. And real time, they update while you're watching the game. Field goal percentage, three-pointers, free throws. Do I want to look at player stats? Over here on the right side, you can look at the teams and each individual players. Let's obviously go check out the Warriors. Uh, Steph Curry had a beast of a game, 46 points. Also got a rep. My man, up and coming, Jonathan Kaminga right here, 22 and 9. But you can look at all this real time as it's happening. And I was instantly already freaking out. I'm like, oh my gosh, this just made my viewing experience so much better. But then I look up there and I was like, games? And so I click it and I'm like, oh wow, all the games that are being played, whether they're live or archived for the day, are here. Um, let's go to a rivalry like Miami, New York. And I click on it and it says, watch game. I could swap it in or I could add to multi-view so all of a sudden one pops up that i'm like oh crap like i can watch on the big screen or i can have it here Let, let's go to another game philadelphia denver yes please add to multi-view so now i have three three screens three games um what else <laughs> la clippers boston yes please add to multi-view that goes there uh new orleans milwaukee Add to multi-view. Do you see what I'm seeing here? We literally have five live streams or archive streams of NBA basketball in my face. I'm freaking out already. I'm like, this is incredible. I can take a game over here, and if I want to, I can swap it in and play it on the big screen. And then my Warriors game and Lakers game, maybe it's during halftime, goes over there. I can watch the game here. <laughs> then... What do you normally do when you're watching sports? Um, yeah, I'm messaging my friends with the group text. Siri, open messages. So that pops in over there. I could be browsing the web here. This is insane. This is a sports fan's wet dream, and it is incredible. This is, again, a day one. All right, we're, we're at day zero right now. Launch app for the NBA you can only imagine how other sports leagues will model this. Then you also think about the future of Apple has MLS. Apple has Major League Baseball. Apple also has their Apple Immersive video platform, which we know can do sports games. So this is just, again, scratching the surface of what is possible. And it is so exciting. Look, if you're an NBA fan, how can you not freak out about it? I'm freaking out about this. This is incredible. Are you freaking out yet? You should be freaking out because this, again, these are just the first, first day one apps that just shows just, just a sliver of the potential of what is possible. And your mind just starts going in all these different directions. Now, the biggest thing, using Vision OS, the speed of the OS, running on an M2, I never questioned whether it was too slow whether it was laggy, where, where if, if it didn't feel like it was flowing. The display here supports 90 hertz, 96 hertz, and 100 hertz refresh rates. Those different refresh rates um, are depending on the type of media content or even overseas in, let's say, like in Europe, they have a standard 50 hertz, so you gotta have 100 to kind of match that with the multiplier. If you're watching something like 24 frames per second uh, movies, that multiplies into 96 seamlessly, and then 30 frames per second, uh, that multiplies into 90 hertz. So there's a reason why this display, it looks buttery smooth. Um, you know, some of the screen captures that I have, yes, I'm screen capturing it. So you might be like, that doesn't look, you know, maybe there's a moment or two where it might be choppy, but trust me, like when you have this on, uh, you, you'll you never question everyone that said, oh, why don't they put an M3 in it? Yes, we know like the next gen GPU is in the M3. I, I said from day one, the M2 has more than enough overhead to support this and try this, experience it, go to store to check it out. You will never say, oh, this feels, this feels slow. Also, um, we talk about eye tracking and hand gestures. You're gonna be relying on Siri a lot more. I used it to launch apps, to close apps, to 
jump between environments. And even because, let's be honest, uh, you can use the virtual keyboard um, and I've gotten a little more used to it, but it's still not ideal ideal when I have to. Yeah, I'll deal with it. But you know, even using your voice to send text messages through Siri, that's gonna um, really be one of the main ways that you communicate with it. Yes, you can use a trackpad. Yes, you can use a physical keyboard and they connect over Bluetooth nicely, but you're not always gonna have those accessible next to you um, and handy. So look, you're gonna rely on your voice, your eyes, and your hands a lot. Also, if you're talking about, okay, well, how do I make payments? What if I'm purchasing new apps? Well, you're not using Face ID because your face is covered, but you're using their optic ID system, which basically does a scan of your eye, which is unique to each person. So that's how they know who you are, but also optic ID ties into your persona, right? If you haven't heard about this or seen this, the persona, this is your digital avatar, and you build this directly on the Apple Vision Pro. Now this headset is also for one person, but there is a guest user mode. So this is, you know, I talked about Optic ID. This is really truly tied just to one user, but you can share it. You can give them access to the apps that you already had open before you hand it off, or you can give them access to all the apps on the Vision Pro. It's also recommended that a person who wants to try it on as a guest gets their own light seal, gets their own uh, sizing, for Vision Pro just because that'll give them the optimal fit. That costs $199, but they can get their own through Apple. But this does support guest users. So let's set up our persona. I'm gonna jump in here and go to my settings. And then we're gonna find persona, go there. Now I have one in here, but I wanna walk you through the process here. So I'm gonna go to recapture. And here you go, capture how you'll appear in FaceTime and other calls. So let's get started. Okay, refine your hand setup. I'm gonna put my hands out. Flip my hands over. This is for hand tracking and hand scanning. Okay. To set up your persona, you'll remove Apple Vision They'll walk you through this tutorial video, which I've done before, so I'm just gonna say continue. Take your time getting ready and make sure nothing's covering your face. To start capturing, hold Apple Vision Pro. Continue. Tips for the best capture, find a well-lit area, use a simple background, be in front of a neutral background. Hopefully this is good enough. Okay, remove Apple Vision Pro to begin capture. Okay, let's do this. Okay, okay, let's do this, okay? When you're ready, hold Apple Vision Pro at eye level. Slowly turn your head to the right. Now slowly turn your head to the left. Now tilt your head up. Then, tilt your head down. Next, let's capture your facial expressions. Smile with your mouth closed. Then, make a big smile with your teeth showing. Now, raise your eyebrows. Close your eyes for a moment. Capture complete. Okay. Put Vision Pro back on to continue. Let's see what happens, y'all. See what happens. Taste, what, maybe? whole process a minute a minute and a half and there I am there that's me oh my gosh hello watch this the mouth tracking ah woo! look look you can choose a natural lighting studio I think is a little brighter okay I can go to contour I think it gets a little bit of my stripe, all right? Gets some of the aspects of it. I think with better line, my previous one, I it, it popped a little more. So you, you might wanna try it a few times, but look, it also captures your, your actual clothes that you did the capture in, which is pretty incredible as well. But look, I'm doing my eyes open, the, my eyebrows, I'm doing that. This is, this is your persona capture. This is a beta. So because there's so many people um, and so many different skin tones and sizes and shapes, Apple's making this a beta. It is available for everyone that has Apple Vision Pro, but it'll improve over time. But yeah, that's pretty impressive. You can also change the temperature of, you know, if I'm going, to, if I come back from Hawaii, I'm a little tanner. That, that's more like me. Um, you can play with the brightness as well. Okay, let's keep it in the middle. But look, it scans my hands. I can do, I can do things with this, right? It shows me like, ah, 
La! <laughs> this is my persona! Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Next. Oh yeah, I forgot that. Eyewear, if you wear glasses of any kind, you can select different frames. I'm not going to, so I'm gonna go back here and say none and go to next. And there you go. That's your persona that you can save. So after I got my persona locked in, you know, what's the first thing that you would do? Well, I try to FaceTime call with some friends. All right, so now Brian has joined us. Oh my gosh. Okay, we were just debating like, what is, what's, what's your hair stripe gonna look like? I, it's, I mean, you, it kind of looks blended out, right? It doesn't get the spikiness, but it's there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What do you think about the shape though? Oh, I mean, actually your hair and my hair is kind of like the same shape, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? We kind of got a little cone, like a little bit of cone head action going up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, I mean, it's better than anyone else has been able to do my hair so far. So, you know, like there, you'll never be able to get like a, a stripe in it. So oh, I'm like, this is cool. But the face stuff is kind of wild. I'm just yeah. like still. The faces are impressive, I think. <laughs> right? Very, very. It's, it's just at the edge of Uncanny Valley. Like, mm. I know mm. what you guys look like, so I know that they look like you. Like, the facial hair. Because have you ever tried to design a character, like, in a 2K game? Yeah. Like, you, try, you really try, like, as hard as you can to get it looking. And it never quite looks like you. This in, what did it take you, a minute, maybe? Yeah, basically. I had to do a few tries. A few scans? <laughs> After a few. Yeah, but the yeah. hard part too is the hair too, especially for me, because it's like you had to have the perfect amount of separation between like your mm. face and the ears because it kept like blurring to the side of my face. Oh, that's so, interesting. I feel like I can do better, but at this point I was like, we're done, we're gonna go with this. But, but it, like whatever you scan yourself in, like that's what you're wearing. So it's like, yeah. my necklace is crooked. I was like, oh, I need to <laughs> fix right. that. That's so cool. <laughs> that's so part of you now. Neat. That's yeah. part of yeah. your persona. You guys, like you said, we know what each other looks like in real life. And this is like, <laughs> ni like I mean, I feel like this is like a nine out of 10, like of how we actually look. It's pretty like, good. And also like skin tones too, because we all three yeah. of us have very different complexions too. And I feel like it actually, I think he did a pretty good job. Yeah. You know what I'm the most impressed by? The audio right now. Like our mics are attached to our heads right now. They sound really good and they're like positioned based on, I'm like pointing like you can see my hands, but they're like positioned based on where you are in front of me. Yeah. yeah. That's the spatial audio is crazy, right? Good. Like the first time I saw this, I was kind of freaked out, but like the, what are you doing? What, what are you, I, are you moving around? I, I moved you, I'm sorry, <laughs> okay. I moved you on purpose so I could hear, like, hear you spatially move okay. in the room based I was, on where I was putting oh, you. But yeah. then when you move me, you're moving. Okay, now oh, no, you're but moving. but it's still cool. Wow. Oh, no. oh wow. Yeah, you're over like, here now. Exactly. Like I could this put is... you behind me in the room. I'm going to put you, I mean, it's weird for you to see, but talk, Whoa. talk real quick. Okay, yeah. hi, so, you oh sound my gosh. Exactly oh my gosh, your neck is yep. like broken. I'm behind you. Oh my God. Sorry. Now you're a shadow. I'm back. I'm back, y'all. Wow. But, so something that just kind of was so shocking for me right now is I just put you guys into an environment and it completely changed the sound. Yes. Like, like oh, so when I go out of my my yes. environment, the spatial, yeah, yeah. It sounds like you're in my room. Yes. But then yes. it switches to now you're in Joshua Tree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like it I'm muffles in, it. I'm in Mount Hood right now. Yeah. It's like the the deadness of no reflections of the wall. Like. And like, I can kind of hear like an echo of your voice, like bouncing off the rocks. This is so weird. Yeah. It's Whoa. wild. Jeez. Man. It's, it's a oh, lot of like that so whole immersion weird. stuff. The immersion stuff is so crazy, like how good it is. When it's like the attention to detail too, like I know we all make fun of Apple, like, oh, when Apple does something, like then it's going to be a thing. But man, they really made this super impressive. I like, did not realize that that, yeah, when you just said like the audio changed and I tried it, I didn't realize how much it made it feel like you guys were in the room with me until it changed. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, yeah, I'm, I did Mount Hood also. And it's like, <laughs> now we're out in the wilderness and it sounds like that. That's crazy. That's so, it's just, it's so shocking. So you can even see during the call, if I actually move um, the video box, you know, from on my right side, they will actually see kind of a side profile on my face. If I move it over to my left side, they'll see a side profile. So there's a little bit of, um, spatial awareness but also when you talk about spatial you've got to talk about spatial audio now there are two audio pods here and these are incredible i actually yeah i tried using airpods here at home but it sounds so good it obviously feels so natural where you don't have to have anything over your ears the the spatial audio and just the audio period that is produced in here 
is incredible. Depending on where someone's located on the screen, you feel that directional sound. Spatial audio, whether it's movies, um, but with FaceTime, you know, video conferencing, and every moment that I've like experienced this, it is definitely an immersive experience. I mean, one of the most immersive, um, and the audio pods, they just sound awesome. Another mode that the Apple Vision Pro has is travel mode. So you can take this on a plane and basically it compensates and calibrates for you being in a moving uh, environment or I guess a moving vehicle right now. Um, I believe it supports just airplanes, but I'm gonna try it out. I'll have a video on my channel, um, but I wasn't ex able to experience that yet because this product hasn't even come out. You can't just go out in public with it. Another big thing that people wanna know about this, what is the Vision Pro like? for gaming, right? So we have support for iOS and iPad OS apps. I mean, gaming on here is pretty ridiculous. Let's say if you, uh, Apple Arcade games, there's about 250 games on launch. So think of this, you have Woo! a controller that's tied to uh, connected over Bluetooth and you can basically just have something around, it feels like around 150 to 200 inch screen smoothly just like drag and change the scale of it, the fidelity of the image and the resolution of those games does not break down. So it doesn't get like all super extra pixelated. The The image quality still holds true. And then you have other apps like Steam and Steam Link. You could actually have a game on your PC on the same network with the controller and use that window, blow it up really big. You can take Apple Arcade games, blow it up really big. This is arguably if you want to use it that way, your largest, biggest, and best gaming display in your house. A lot of the games here on launch, um, they aren't what I would call like full takeover VR type games. This is going to take time for developers to get at it. So there's fun games like Stitch where you're, you're like, you know, drawing in kind of like, it's like a color slash puzzle game. There's stuff here on launch, but you know, you gotta wait for developers to really get their hands on it um, for us to see, you know, games tailor-made for this. And that's what I hope to see. Now, if there's one word to describe the Apple Vision Pro, that word is immersive. This is the most immersive headset I've ever experienced. You know, I gotta um, use it and, you know, test it out in half an hour um, hands-on experiences before this review. But now that I've had it um, from an immersive video standpoint and experience, this thing is incredible. I mean, you first have those environments that really transport and take you away from where you are, whether you wanna do work while you're in, in an environment, whether you wanna watch a movie, you know, Haleakala, you have Yosemite, you have the this like cool sand area, sure, you, you have Mount, Mount Hood, Hood, and they have daytime versions, nighttime versions they can also change like the weather can change um as well in here but they really transport you to different locations you even have something like uh, the meditation app that you feel like you're in a different world and then when you start talking about actual immersive video content right we have the apple immersive video platform there's you know a rehearsal stage with alicia keys and this is again their acquisition of next vr you're watching 180 degree video, all right, in front of you. So it basically covers your peripherals. Uh, it's in, it's shot in 8K, it's 3D, and it supports high dynamic range. This just, it's incredible to see this and you you feel it, if that makes sense. You, you actually feel the video and there's not anything out there like that today. And then spatial audio on top of that, that has been able, been able to capture that just yet. Also, we talk about 3D movies. Apple TV will have 150 3D movies available on launch. If you already have purchased the movie and it's available in 3D, you have the option to either watch the 2D version or the 3D version of the movie. This is also incredible because you're, you're of course you're wearing um, you know a headset, but you're not wearing actual glasses that you know sometimes you get a screen door effect. When there's a lot of action, the frame rate can break down a tiny bit, but this is the best looking 3D that I've ever seen. And I was the 3D junkie who bought, you know, uh, the Panasonic TVs back in the day and bought all the different 3D glasses and bought a huge collection of 3D movies and now TVs today don't support it. This is the best fidelity of a 3D experience we've ever seen. It supports 
high dynamic range, uh, and also supports high frame rate. So that means movies that are like 48 frames, like uh, Avatar Way of Water, you get the original, original director's intent in a headset like this. You throw in the spatial audio, it's, it's just incredible all the things that can do. And then look, I just had to add this part here because it's important. I mean, when we talk about the I word, immersive. So when you watch a movie, you can go into the cinema view and Apple tease that. It just doesn't translate as well in the headset and it's really shaky, but you can actually get the prime spot, whether it's a middle seat, front row, back row, or even up on the balcony and the theater that you're in changes perspective while the movie transitions into these different locations. Uh, it is special. And when we talk about just being in an immersed environment, that is another way it does it. And then on top of that, you have the ability to take and record spatial photos or spatial videos from either your iPhone 15 pros or take them directly on this device. You have this top button here on the left side and that allows you to, when you tap it, it puts you in kind of the spatial capture mode. You either hold it for video, you just press it once for single photos, it saves them directly to the device. But on your phone, you kind of get that large wide landscape aspect ratio for videos and photos. And so that's my preference. Then you just airdrop in here and you can really capture intimate moments that just come alive on this headset like nothing you've ever seen or experienced before. So we're talking about from top to bottom, Apple immersive video, 3D movies, immersive environments, and your own personal spatial video. This is the most immersive headset we have ever seen. And from someone who loves to consume content, this is really special. Now, of course, the question is, okay, Brian, you're talking about this battery life. What do we, what do we got for battery life? Well, you know, with normal use, Apple said two hours. And then with watching movie, Apple said, two and a half hours. But what I can tell you is I put this to the test. I've been wearing this a whole lot just for you. And which is normal, normal use. We're talking about running multiple apps, doing FaceTime calls, even playing uh, like YouTube TV on the side while I'm doing other things, playing music. I was able to push this out um, for two hours and 26 minutes. So it's almost, we're talking about two and a half hours of normal day-to-day -day use. And I was pushing a lot harder than I even would in a normal way, but that's good to know, right? At least from a from a day-to-day -day real world, you're basically getting around two and a half hours. Now for watching a 3D movie, I made it all the way through Avengers Endgame, and then I just had like a couple minutes extra of juice. This headset for a movie, 3D movie, lasted three hours and nine minutes. So what that tells you is that both of the, whether it's using it for regular use or using it for movies, both were about half an hour more than what Apple officially stated battery life wise, which has been typical for Apple, but at least you know now, it's really real world, two and a half hours of day-to-day -day use and then three plus hours of watching a movie and that's really incredible. Now, you have your battery, right? If you need to recharge it, it, it takes one and a half hours to go from zero all the way to 100%. I did just for fun a 30 minute charge and I got it to 37%, so yes, you do need a battery pack and there will be caveats that come with that as well. So look, I've been saying a lot of great things about the Apple Vision Pro and again, there's nothing out there like it, but there's obviously, this is the first gen. There's some things, some drawbacks that you need to know about. And I'm sure some of these things that are missing will likely, you know, come in time. Again, this is, this is day one of this device. Um, but I think the one of the first things I notice is, you know, you download all these different apps, but there is, no app customization right now, meaning after Apple's apps on the home screen, the rest of the apps are actually listed alphabetically. So you currently cannot move them around or customize the layout, um, create a different order or even create folders to group your apps together. You do have compatible iPhone and iPad apps. Um, those are in the compatible apps folder. Um, you could also use Siri to launch an app specifically, or you can go to control center and then use spotlight to find an app, but you know, right out of the gates, you're kind of like thinking that, oh, I can customize this like iOS, you can't right now. We also have YouTube and Netflix, right? Those, they do not have native apps. They don't have compatible apps that they ported over from uh, iPad OS. So my hope was that I could, you know, go to the website and then add it as an app on my home screen. Uh, you are not able to do that. So that's pretty inconvenient because look, 
Netflix, YouTube, and YouTube TV. Those are three services that I use quite a lot and I'd like to at least be able to, hey, take that you know, web page and turn it into a web app. You can't do that right now um, as of day one. So it is inconvenient. Um, my hope is that this gets resolved. And so for now, that's something that you can't do now. Will this stop me from saying, oh, we'll get this device? I think it's obviously an inconvenience, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt and I'm pretty sure it'll be worked out. But what you could do right now is, you know, set one as your homepage in Safari as it launches or, you know, create them as favorites. Now, also things to be aware of, right? This is a list of more caveats, battery swap, right? Now, remember this device, it hasn't changed. Once this battery runs out, if you want to like, you know, change over to a new battery, there is no time where, oh, it has like, you know, you can't like hot swap it and this is still running. The actual Apple Vision Pro will shut down once you remove a battery and connect a new one. But the time is not too bad. I mean, I put in a battery fully charged from start and, you know, from, from a cold start, it takes about 37 seconds to warm up. You're going to hear this um, deep, bright chime that is a little different sounding specifically for Apple Vision Pro. And once you hear that chime, you can put this on your head and then in about five more seconds, you'll see an Apple logo and then the video feed shows up inside the Apple Vision Pro. But right now, once you swap batteries, the power will turn off and then you'll have to wait for it to boot up again. Also, I think one of the things that I noticed over time um, is movie lens reflections. And what do I mean by that? So, you know, this happens in other VR headsets, but specifically when maybe there's some really bright scenes, it's kind of funny, like the displays are so good and the high dynamic range is so good. When you have certain scenes in movies that are really bright, you'll sometimes it'll sometimes reflect because you're looking through lenses and these are curved lenses, you'll see a little bit of like some reflections on the edge. Now there is a really sweet spot to see the video like when you're watching movies, but it can happen. Um, and look, I'm just letting you know that it's it's not something that is going to you're gonna hate. I think the ultimate video file will will probably be a little annoyed by it. I notice it because I'm the person who like you know gets the 4K OLEDs and pays attention to all that stuff. So it's a little distracting. It happens in some scenes, but also I notice because a lot of the demos are typically in bright rooms. When it when you're in a bright room or bright environment, you actually don't really see the reflections that much. It's only when I was pitch black in a room or pitch black in an environment where I could see a little bit of it. It's just something to let you know. It's really dynamic scenes that are bright. Now, I think the biggest thing that everyone knows and has heard about it is the weight of the headset. And I will tell you that you will feel this, right? 30 minutes in, for me, it gets a little uncomfortable. 45 minutes to an hour is really the most that I can use it for, like straight through. But like I told you, to test um, using it day to day, I kept it on for two, almost two and a half hours. To watch a movie and see how long it lasted, I kept it on for three plus hours. But I know that in a normal situation, if I wasn't doing that for y'all, um, I would not be able to wear it that long. I personally need to take breaks. So for me, 45 minutes to an hour was the absolute like threshold for me to be like, I need to take a breather from this. You know, even I'll, I'll be honest with you, after two days, I didn't realize it, but like I touched over here and I got, you know, it's, this is an all new device. This is things that we haven't done before. I, I got a little like, a little bit of tenderness around my forehead after two days. It didn't stop me from using it, but I did feel it. And that was something different. So for me, someone needs to make a headset um, that can help distribute the weight better. There is the dual band loop that does help. But even with that, I still after, you know, once I hit that 45 minute mark specifically, then I'm like, oh, I need to take these off. I might be able to push it out to an hour, but that's when I felt it. Some of you might feel it earlier. Some of you might not. I think that quite honestly, people with bigger heads, it helps distribute the weight a little better for you because it's pulled uh, wider, but I hope either Apple works on making something that has a little bit of a counterweight to pull this off your face. We know like with other brand, like Meta, the Quest 3 and the Quest 2, they've had that elite strap with like the battery pack here that just helps lift it a little bit. Um, the weight difference here, this is around 600 to 650 grams. The Meta Quest 3, 
is like 500, 515 grams. So this is a little heavier. It's not significantly heavier, but no matter what, every headset you wear, you will feel the weight and I felt the weight here. So I'm hoping that we can get other um, head, head strap options that might alleviate that a little bit. The other thing that I didn't really think of and didn't expect is um, when I use this, I think I'm get, I get a little more exhausted than normal because uh, there's just a lot, I'm overstimulated. Like this is definitely using our brain in different ways. And there's so much sensory overload from the video feed, from me looking around, from me like swiping at graphics, from things like just like coming at me. I can tell that I definitely get a little fatigued after using after using that. So that's why I also need to take a break. And I again, to my point is, I think this is triggering our brain to uh, act and take in information. Uh, just because there's just there's just so much there and it's exciting like don't get me wrong it is really fun and I, I love being inside it but it can also be a little exhausting from overstimulation so I think maybe part of it is I've been a week into it now I'm learning to maybe slow down the way I use it a lot of times when you're you're looking at things because you want to jump around so fast you know you might want to you know tap to select something and you're already looking at the next thing just take your time a little bit in it. Also, I did test it um, using it in the dark more. And when it's too dark, it will tell you where it may not be able to see your hand as well. There are IR illuminators here on the bottom that you can still use this in the dark, but when it gets too, too dark or certain situations, it will warn you that it may not be able to see your hands as well, um, but it still can be used. Um, I didn't have a problem with it, but I just wanna let you know the, even sometimes uh, like some of the sensors, it would at least give you a warning when it, it couldn't see them as well. So just be aware of this. I think this definitely performs the best in well light conditions. It doesn't perform poorly in darker situations. It just may not be as, as effective when you get those warnings. But also I think another thing that I've noticed that I wasn't expecting is this tap move you know, when, when we were using the iPhone, we were using like our thumbs a lot. And I would always joke like, oh man, I, I'm building biceps. This tap move there. I mean, I, you know, when you're using it so much, you even get fatigued here too. So again, we're using these new devices in different ways and our body is having to adjust to that. But guess what? We adjust, uh, this thing is still unreal. So We've talked all about that, the caveats of what makes this great, what makes this special, how immersive this is, and then some of the things that, oh, maybe you might consider, okay, what, what are some of the challenges that come with this for you know the first time that Apple's put on a headset? But I think obviously the biggest thing that everyone talks about is not only the comfortable, comfortability, is that a word? <laughs> how comfortable this is, uh, you know, the weight of the headset, but the price, right? And let's be honest, I've said this multiple times, this is not priced as a headset for everyone. We know this, right? I don't expect everyone to go out and buy this, but everything I've showed you, it's up to you to make that determination of if this is worth $3,499 starting. You saw my pre-order video, it pushed up because I got an extra battery, I got the highest capacity, I got Apple Care. It basically pushed it to near $5,000. That's a huge investment. I cover tech for a living but that's a decision that you have to figure out for yourself. I think, first of all, no matter what, through this whole video, this is a device that I highly recommend that you go to an Apple store if there's one near you, go through the demo process, feel it out, experience it. I think it's gonna be really exciting. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, but just do that first before you make a decision. I know there's a lot of people that bought, bought this in person at Sight Unseen and, you know, that is that is the true you know apple believer the also someone who just wants to be on the cutting edge of tech this is the cutting edge of technology there's nothing out there like it we will see what the future holds and what direction um this pushes things and where people move towards but obviously apple's in this for the long haul but you've you've got to try it on for most people this is a huge investment this is a luxury device uh but you know, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm already loving it. Uh, I can't wait to see where this is, honestly, in three to five years when it's gonna get lighter in weight. It's gonna get more comfortable. The price will likely be 
a little more affordable. I'm not going to no everyone who's asking for a $500 headset from Apple. Uh, that's not happening anytime soon. This is the vision pro and this is, uh, just the build quality alone would would not get it to that area. So don't, don't think of it that way. Look at all the tech in here and look at all the experiences that I've been tried to convey to you. And this is an incredible, incredible piece of technology. This is up to you to decide for yourself. Is it worth it or not? And also all that chatter about this is a beta product. Um, using it, it doesn't feel like a beta product. You know, this is a polished product. Developers, yes, have to get on it. The price is not, you know, the most consumer friendly. It's not. We can all say that, admit that. But for people that haven't used it, that are just outright calling this, uh, you know, a dev kit, I think that's selling it short and use it just from a pure entertainment standpoint. It's prime time already. And again, it's only going to get better. Like, I'm excited to see what developers do and what Apple does with this product over time. I think if you love tech and you want to experience something you have never, ever, ever have before, and you have the resources, then you should get an Apple Vision Pro. If you don't have the resources to do it, look, don't do it. Like these are the grown up decisions that we all make for ourselves. We all value things differently, right? It's up to you to decide if it's worth it to you after everything I've shown you, because for everyone that loves their fancy handbags, and I know a lot of you have multiple handbags, hey, this is my fancy handbag. And you know, if it's too expensive for most people, which it is, like, I don't expect everyone to get one. I really don't. Just follow along with this journey. It's gonna um, develop in so many incredible ways. We still don't know if this will be a true success, however that's defined, but we know that Apple is in this for the long haul. Uh, you know, all of Apple's DNA is in here from design, from software, from compatibility with all their other platforms and products and, you know, even the media relationships they have. Like this is everything, you know, for all these years put into here. And every time I jump in, it just feels like I'm using the next frontier of computing and entertainment that is just right on the horizon. We'll see if we actually get there. We'll see if everyone gets there, right? There's still considerations. The comfort, the price, yes, but the experiences that this has, they, 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 they're, already, they're already changing my brain a little bit. Like, this is really wild stuff. I mean, as someone who's loved tech and has followed this for all these years, that when you see something like this that can do that to you, like, that, that's what it's all about. It is appropriate that the timing of this comes um, just within a week of the 40th anniversary of the Mac because that was a paradigm shift in how we saw computing and how we worked and interacted with computers and how accessible it was. This feels like another shift that is happening and could happen. I'm not saying it's going to, but the way that we interact with windows and media and content and the immersive nature, I'm not saying like we're all gonna be wearing these outside every day, but all the learnings that are, com that are coming from here and as this gets smaller, and lighter. It's it's going to take us in new places and this this really feels like it introduces a whole new world and a whole new shift of what is possible with technology. And bottom line, look, this is the most amazing piece of tech that I have ever ever experienced in my life. And this is just scratching the surface of its potential and that is an exciting uh development in itself. You know, you wonder like Am I saying, go run out and get right now? No, you don't have to. Follow along, make the decision for yourself. You're a grown up. But hopefully what I showed you um, could really inform you and be like, oh wow, I see why this is special or what this does and why you really, yeah, it's a headset, but you, you, can't, you can't compare it to anything out there. You just can't. There, there's nothing out there like that. So if you want my final verdict, right? Good Apple, bad Apple, guess what? Nothing like this has ever been done. This is a blow my mind apple. I, I, I still can't comprehend like everything that I feel about this thing. It's, it's freaking incredible. Apple Vision Pro, you blow my mind.